Welcome everyone and thanks so much uh, for joining us today. Uh, I'm Oscar Ramirez. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Startup Commons. Uh, you know, uh, one of the biggest things we are doing at the Startup Commons is to develop ecosystem OS, uh, a data hub uh, designed to share and deliver data within and uh, between ecosystems uh, to effectively serve ecosystem builders in their efforts towards ecosystem orchestration. Uh, in, in that process of connecting ecosystems digitally, we are also partnering with companies uh, that are developing digital solutions for different ecosystem needs, like ecosystem mapping or startup event management or startup one-stop shops or startups and investor matching tools, etc. Uh, to, to essentially uh, help connect ecosystem application needs with suitable application uh, from startup commons application partners. But also uh, to, to enable data connectivity uh, between both parties to jointly uh, develop open standards and connectivity models along the way uh, to help remove uh, data silos within and between ecosystems. Uh, in, in 2016, uh, we started to introduce this approach as part of our different uh, workshops and consulting works. Being MAGIC, the Malaysian Global Innovation and Creativity Center, uh, the first organization that got this concept and decided uh, to seriously take it to practice in order to remove their own internal data silos as a consequence of the multiple supporting programs they were delivering to support entrepreneurs and startups in their different phases. So today, uh, it's, it's a true pleasure for me to have uh, GC and Tang with us. So GC and Tang, together with his team, are, are working quite hard to, to make a meaningful impact to the Malaysian startup ecosystem through coding. He is leading the development of Open Hub and open source a startup ecosystem management tool to keep data up to date in one place. Tan, Hi, welcome, my, welcome <laughs> my friend. And the crowd is waiting for your presentation today. Thanks. Uh, before I start, I would like to wish you a happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> and I also like to apologize on the time zone. Right? Uh, it's kind of like 4.30 uh, in Malaysia time now. Uh, it's kind of like raining heavily out there. Uh, I just hope the internet connection will be fine. Uh, right, so let's start. My name is uh, Yixiang and I'm a tech lead from Magic. Uh, so there's a, a little uh, mistake there on the EDM. I, I'm not a VP of tech, uh, but uh, I'm a, a tech lead that uh, still like to hands-on on coding. So uh, I still uh, build most part of the uh, central project uh, ourselves. So uh, for, for the following uh, presentations, I, I will be uh, walk through you guys uh, about what's magic. Uh, then the second part, I will uh, show you what's central. Uh, and last, I will be talking about the open source project of it. Right. So uh, I have some slide to present. Uh, please allow me to share my screen. Can you guys see my screen now? So let's create it full screen. Oops. Okay. Right, so you can actually uh, reach out to us uh, at the following URL, www.mymagic.my. Uh, we are a government agency uh, formed by the Ministry of Finance. Uh, in, when we are founded in the year 2014 uh, to oversee the entire startup ecosystem here in Malaysia. Uh, I won't read you our mission and vision statement because that's kind of late and kind of change uh, easily. <laughs> but basically what we do is uh, uh, we want to help our startups uh, in Malaysia. Uh, we also helping startups from overseas uh, to set up their base in Malaysia. And we are focusing on startup at the early stage because there's other uh, agencies uh, who are looking at the later state. So for Magic, uh, we focus at the students, uh, the aspiring entrepreneurs. So as you can see here in my presentation slide, uh, that's our uh, 
big and beautiful uh, auditoriums where uh, any uh, ecosystem actor can actually book this place and run their events. Uh, for example, they have a product launching, they have a sharing session or even hackathon. Uh, we do it all here. Uh, we also run our own uh, events uh, in this space. Uh, this, uh, our space is not that big. It's a three-story buildings uh, located at Cyberjaya, just like uh, around 30 minutes of drive from uh, KL International Airport. So on the top left side, uh, as you can see, the, there's a place with a green, green grass. Uh, it's actually an artificial grass. Uh, that's our uh, space we use for our magic uh, global accelerator programs. So we call it GAP. GAP is our uh, flagship programs where we accept a startup uh, from around the world and Malaysia as well, up to 30 of them every year uh, to help them uh, accelerate through a series of workshop classes and mentorships. And next will be our co-working space. Uh, so for info, our co-working space is uh, subsidized by government and is uh, cheapest in the town. And next uh, we, is our branch at the, at the East Malaysia, a, a state called Sarawak. So we have a kind of a like HQ and a branch. Uh, working in the two different locations. Right, so before I start, I'd also like to introduce you uh, to our start definition. Uh, because this, this is quite important, it's uh, kind of the pillars or foundations where we build our programs and the system uh, on. Right, so our definition is quite uh, uh, common, I would say. Uh, it's a measurable part. It's, uh, we, as long as your start is not incorporated for more than five years, and revenue or funding rates is uh, uh, within below the 20 million uh, limits then you are considered a startup. Of course, you have to be innovation driven, uh, disruptive technology is used, and your business model is scalable. So there's kind of exponential uh, growth that we are talking about. And there's a uh, potential for high impact uh, create through your startups. So these uh, actors uh, in uh, Malaysia's uh, ecosystem uh, by the federal and government agencies. So I've got these uh, three circle things, uh, my favorite three circles from uh, Style Commons uh, is the components who build up the startup definitions. Uh, you need to be innovations, uh, utilizing digitals and uh, have an entrepreneurship element in that. So when we talk about startups, uh, uh, each of the agencies that's uh, related to each of the components is kind of uh, one of the actor as well, right? They, like for example, we have uh, uh, at the digital space, we have MDEC, uh, which has a strength of like 600 employees. This are government and other government uh, agencies that's uh, looking at how to uh, digital transform the nations, uh, followed by the SKMN, which is another agency with a license uh, to regulate uh, radios and, oh, sorry. How can I go back? Right. Uh, yep, to regulate the radio and the frequencies, right, telco and so on. So th these are the very established uh, agencies in this space. And when we talked about uh, entrepreneurship, of course, there's uh, small and medium uh, corporations, uh, which has a 500 uh, employee uh, headcount. Uh, on the innovation side, uh, we have many other actors. I'm not going to go through uh, every one of them. So magic is kind of like have to play along with all these players uh, in, in, uh, together. And of course, there's some uh, overlapping of functions. Uh, or you can see it as an opportunity to collaborate uh, there. Next would be the state level, right? So Malaysia have uh, about 13 of the states here, uh, mostly concentrate at the Klang Valley, which is the, where the capital city is uh, based at. So Magic is uh, caught at the central locations. Uh, we have up north, uh, we have uh, another agency called ACAT, and at the down south, we have another called Iskandar. And on the East Malaysia side, uh, which is, uh, we have uh, Sarawak and Sabah. Uh, Sarawak is actually drive by the Sarawak Media Authority, uh, where the main key person that uh, we are in, in uh, contact with is called Haswan. Uh, we also met him last year at the uh, uh, Finland uh, Helsinki at the Slash event, uh, Global uh, Ecosystem Developer Summit, right? And for the Sabah side, uh, it's, it's quite a new, uh, new uh, hub that's uh, established by one of our ex-magicians. Uh, uh, it's called Sabah uh, Creative Economy and uh, Innovation Hubs. So this, uh, just to give you a, a figures, uh, a overview of uh, how the startup landscape in Malaysia looks like. Uh, so you can look at the uh, map on the, uh, the right-hand side here. Uh, 
most of our participants uh, who came for our uh, courses, classes or events, uh, they are around the central Malaysia, which from Selangor and KL. And then the second largest group will be the Sarawak and followed by Sabah. So these, these are actually the hotspot of uh, uh, ecosystem, star ecosystem in Malaysia. And so far, uh, after since I think around six years of operations, we have around uh, created impact at uh, 1,200 uh, unique startups, right? So this is the number here. And for individuals uh, who we impacted is uh, at 77,000 of them. And down there, you can see the age group, uh, they are mostly youth and their persona is uh, mostly uh, students and uh, aspiring entrepreneurs. So that actually match our functions uh, uh, well. And last, before I end this, I'd like to show you this as well. I'm not sure you can see this uh, URL. Yeah. So this is the startup uh, journey map that we are using. Uh, I know that Star Common have another uh, startup path that they recommend as well. Uh, ours is slightly different than theirs. Uh, probably for those in the deep tech or R&D, there's an even different uh, journey map as well. So for ours, I'm just going to brief you uh, quickly through this. Uh, you start with discover stage, and then you go to validation stage, and next you follow by the product developments and uh, efficiency stage means you have already have attractions, uh, you are ready to grow, and at the fifth stage, you are at a growth stage, which means uh, you are expanding to a regional markets or international market. And last, you end up at a mature stage, which is uh, you're planning to exit, uh, you're on the process to IPO. So we, we imagine uh, most of our events or programs are concentrated at the stage one to four, I would say. Right? Uh, for example, we have an awareness program for the discover stage. We go uh, root shows, uh, we run root shows at university, uh, try to motivate the students uh, to go into the entrepreneurships. And for the validation stage, we actually have uh, sponsored events like uh, Start Weekend or Hackathon. Uh, we sponsor in terms of uh, uh, cash money, cash prizes, or even the value of usage and things like that. And for the third stage, uh, we run our co-working space, uh, which is uh, to, to provide a space for teams that want to develop their product further. And our flagship program, the Global Accelerator uh, Program, is actually uh, fall at the fourth uh, stage, which is the efficiency stage. So uh, for this year, we are running it soon, uh, but due to COVID, uh, we are putting it online, so it will be run uh, virtually. You can find more information about this program at our website. And uh, yeah, this diagram is uh, available at this uh, URL below, uh, bit.ly, uh, magic-startup-stages. Cool, uh, next, so I guess you guys, uh, have quite a good understanding about what magic is. Uh, I'll proceed with uh, our magic central. So, what is magic central? Uh, yeah, it's actually we started uh, looking around. Right? We, the management found that there's a need for uh, software to track all these uh, events or activities that we run. Uh, the government is the stakeholder. They will ask like. Uh, I put in this amount of money, X amount of money, but what's the Y amount of return? Uh, what's the uh, return of investment, right? Uh, that magic bring to the government. So because of all this need, then we started to look for solutions out there. Uh, I still remember in the 2015, I, I did a Google search and tried to type in keywords like open source uh, startup uh, management software because I, as a programmer, I do not want to reinvent the wheel. So that actually bring me to a uh, Startup Commons website. <laughs> That's how I know uh, Oscar and uh, Otto since then. Uh, I actually contacted them through Facebook. And then we engaged them for consultancy uh, uh, contracts uh, that, that fly them into Malaysia uh, to map uh, the ecosystem here. And we actually bring them around, uh, talk to different uh, actors in the ecosystems. So yeah, we move on to a uh, develop this uh, product in-house based on the input provided by the Startup Commons. Right. So uh, today I'm going to share with you uh, what we have. Right. So the kind of problems we try to solve is the information silo. This is the main problem, right? Uh, we know information silo is common, not just in the government agency, but even a, a profit-driven corporation that 
as long as you have different teams, uh, functional teams, uh, the, si the silo will be there. Uh, it's just like, is it a very serious problem or is it just a light issue? So for us, uh, we use a lot of Google's uh, solutions. Uh, most of our information and data is uh, scattered around in the Google Drive of different uh, program owners. Right? Uh, and the, the, the problem we face is actually when these people left uh, Magic and then the, the knowledge transfer is not done properly, uh, some data get lost in the process. And even when they are around, changing data through a, a cloud drive is not that uh, ideal, right? The next problem we try to solve is actually the management challenge. So as you all know, uh, KPI is common, right? Uh, but most of the time what you see on the graph probably is just uh, numbers, but you don't know what's behind these numbers. Uh, what we build actually allow our uh, senior manager uh, and stakeholder to click into the numbers to get into uh, the data behind the numbers for the detailed data, the atomic levels. So they can see like, for example, these 100 people who attended this program, A, eh? they can click inside and look at who is this uh, 100 people. So that gave them a uh, confidence because our data is pr uh, transparent. Right? Next will be the bad UX experience. Right? That's what we try to solve. Before we build central, we actually outsource our system uh, to different uh, vendors. Right? Uh, and the decision was made by uh, various program owners in Magic. So for example, program A, they choose to outsource to this guy who can do uh, this web system using Ruby on Rails. The other program B will be using another system built by Microsoft uh, technology stack, and another guy on the PHP, and then another guy on the Node.js. So, well, our team in Magic, um, uh, by the way, we have an internal tech team in Magic. That's the where the, the team I belongs to. But our headcount is uh, not uh, at any single time more than eight of us. So we cannot uh, take care of all this system uh, at the same time. Right? Uh, the it's a nightmare to maintain that. Uh, not to even to mention about thinking about integrating them. And uh, since it's built by different uh, uh, vendor, the user experience, the data definitions, uh, even the database design can be different. So that's the, one of the problems that we try to solve using Centra as well. And last but not least is the redundant effort. I'm sure you guys uh, has been heard about there's a resource directory built by this uh, organization. as another resource directory, uh, maybe for AI, it's resource directory for this uh, state of uh, Sarawak, for example. So it's like, it, even within the same country, you have multiple resource directory. Everyone try to come up uh, one of their own. Uh, in fact, this is the first one we built as well, because it's, I think it's kind of fun to build a resource directory, right? But uh, in the end, to update the data is uh, never a uh, fun thing, right? uh, because there's too many uh, redundant system out there. Uh, even if we rely on the crowdsource uh, method, uh, the user will, not, will be kind of like, they'll get, uh, irritated with all this uh, duplicate system and what's worse is when all their data is not up to date. So before I proceed, I'd like to show you uh, what the kind of achievement we have now with uh, Centrals. Uh, we have around 23,000 registered members. Uh, we kind of achieve these numbers by forcing them to use our system. Because uh, as long as they want to join our events, uh, they need to register a member first. So that's how we achieve this number, <laughs> kind of like a hack. Uh, next, we have around 5,000 of registered companies. So these companies are, are not all uh, belong to startups. Some of them are social enterprise because uh, Magic have another mean that uh, to uh, uh, grow the social enterprise company as well. Uh, some of them are the company who provide the resources. They can be a co-working space or another government agencies. So in a total, uh, our system have around 1,400 events recorded and the participants' uh, data we capture is around 170 of them. So what is central uh, in the nutshell? I think this visual uh, uh, diagram will give you a better understanding. Right? So on the right hand side, we have our end users. Right? They can be an aspiring entrepreneur, developers, an investor, or a government uh, or corporate uh, people. They all interact with our central system uh, through the services we have. So the services that we build are like uh, mentorship program service, resource directory is another services, uh, accelerator management system, form management system, event management system. I think uh, these are all the common uh, uh, services that all ecosystems around the world will need eventually. And 
the central is actually just a platform, a base uh, that keep uh, supporting all these different uh, services on top, right? And there's also a backend uh, that's uh, allow our program owners uh, from Magix, which is also the uh, admin to log in the backend and they can get an overview of what's happening in the, in the system. And on the left hand side, we have our corporate KPI. Uh, since all data now is in one place in the same single database, uh, we are using MySQL by the way, uh, we can easily uh, tap into this database and present uh, to any form of dashboard. So in our case, we are using a uh, Google Data Studio uh, to build this uh, dashboard. It makes sense because uh, Magic is heavily uh, rely on Google uh, Business Suite, right? Uh, that's uh, our Gmail, we're using Gmail, we're using Google Calendars, uh, we subscribe to the drive, and yeah. And our stakeholder, which is the senior management, or even an external person from the ministry that can, uh, from time to time, log into our corporate KPI and view the data live. So I'm going to show you uh, the, the front end services, the back end, as well as the, uh, the KPI part. But I, I, I could not show you some of the data, so I will just show you uh, some of this less uh, uh, sensitive uh, data part in the KPI. Right, uh, probably I'll come back to this slide later on. Uh, we proceed to the demo of the central system first. Okay, let me show you the front end of it. So this is our magic website, uh, ready preloaded in case my internet uh, slow down. As you can see, uh, we are showing our numbers here as well. And when you click on the link, you actually go to our uh, public dashboard. So that's actually the screenshot that I showed you uh, earlier. Loading. So it, it takes some time to load. Yeah, this is connecting to the database live. Yeah, so this is the exact same uh, dashboard that you are seeing here. Uh, it's available from our website. I just want to show you this. Uh, most of our users uh, will interact with our website uh, to join our events. So they'll go to actually the event page, right? Uh, and they can see what's the upcoming events uh, available. Uh, they can click the events and get the information about the detail of this event. And if they are interested, they'll register. So when they register, we actually bring them to our uh, Eventbrite uh, site. So in the past, we used Visabo, and then we switched to uh, Eventbrite uh, because I think most of our users are in, in the Eventbrite as well. Uh, if it's a paid event, then it will be done through the Eventbrite and so on and so forth. Uh, once the registration is done, all this data actually uh, triggers and funnel back to our uh, central system using the API callback. And that's how we can capture all this information in one place. Okay. Next, I'm going to walk you through uh, our another uh, module, which is the uh, community page. So uh, as a hub of a startup, uh, we get a lot of inquiries from uh, different stakeholders. Like they will ask who is your alumni, who joined your program, uh, which program they join, how good is these startups. Uh, so we are lazy to answer all these questions one by one and what we do is uh, we just put all of them online right? and uh, we also support the, uh, our own de de uh, government's uh, open data initiative. So there's a machine readable format that we uh, snapshot from time to time and we will be updating on this side. So let me show you one of the examples of our startups. Uh, being, uh, yeah, this is the Food Market Hub startup. Uh, this, this startup joined our events uh, in, the, in the past, uh, and we can see the data we capture about them. Uh, they are in the food and beverage industry, and we know who are the team members and what the programs that they join. So they joined the second cohort of, of our accelerator programs. So these GAP programs, uh, we do have a few uh, famous uh, startup. Uh, for example, uh, Pingfong, uh, if you 
familiar with a uh, baby shark, so they are actually the studio behind that. Uh, Sorry, I think I, I, I can't find their data here. <laughs> it's quite embarrassing. It's kind of like demo during my final year projects. Uh, probably for some reasons they have been taken out from the site. Uh, so yeah, we do get requests like that, like startups sometimes ask us not to feature them. So probably they are afraid of some privacy issues. So that uh, we actually respect their decisions, right? So there's also startup like Bukalapa or RunCloud. Let's see if uh, RunCloud is around. Yeah, so run cloud is around. So uh, this uh, startup that uh, based in Malaysia that provide kind of uh, uh, rapid cloud deployments uh, services. Uh, you can you can see that they are how how they involved with uh, Magix programs. They was in our co working space, and they join our accelerator programs, and they return back to the co working space. So that's how we get a, a, a detailed information about the startups. So there's a lot of things more we can do for this uh, community. Right? We can add in the, the achievement, we can add in the latest news, uh, uh, the media cover about the, uh, all can be done here. Okay, next uh, be the resource directory. So this is the resource directory we have. Uh, for example, if I'm a student uh, looking for uh, uh, specific resources, I can just filter by students. Mm -hmm. are, if I want to look for a, a grant for students, I can further drill in. And uh, these are the resources available. I can click inside. Uh, it's nothing fancy here actually. It's just a, a short description about the resource and the link uh, to the to the to their resource uh, respective website. So for information, this. Uh, Resource directory is a crowdsource. That means anyone can actually log into the central and uh, start at their own new resources. Uh, of course, uh, you require admin approvals to be listed here. And as you can see, we also put in the filter of the different stages we have, uh, matching the presentation that I show you uh, just now, like what's the start stages. So you can actually look for resources that match your uh, stages. Uh, as well as the, your locations that let's say you want to look for a Sarawak specific resources. So all these can be customized uh, in the, in the backend uh, industry as well. Cool. Next, I'm going to uh, show you the mentorship service. So we identify that mentorship is, is one of the essential components. Uh, if you want uh, your early stage startup to get the right advices uh, from the, the later stage startup. So we created this platform. Uh, it's actually a partner between uh, Magic and our alumni, uh, which is called Future Lab. So they, they actually have their own complete uh, mentorship software system. What we did is uh, we just uh, listed all the mentors here. And when you want to make a booking, uh, we actually bring you to the, the data that's uh, stored on the Future Lab website. So for example, this mentor, uh, there's a transparent rating system. You see it's a four star and you drill down, you see, okay, so people complain it's not, the session did not happen. So probably someone booked him, but uh, for whatever reason, he did not turn out. Uh, but as a user, you can actually uh, select the time slot that's available of this mentor. And you can uh, key in your details. Right, so what's your phone number, so uh, what's your inquiry, what you would like to get uh, advice on, then you just make a uh, book history. So after the booking, you have to make a rating and yeah, that's uh, how it works uh, uh, to keep all these things transparent. Because all these mentors, they are doing it uh, voluntary, uh, free, uh, without pay from uh, Magic. 
this uh, what I show you just now is just the front end of uh, Magic Central. Next, I'm going to show you uh, what uh, you will see after you lock in the system uh, as the users. Right. So for that, uh, we'll be using a uh, and our staging because there's some uh, data uh, privacy issues that we like to protect. Uh, I can't show some of the real data here. So this uh, screen I get after I log in to our uh, uh, open, open hub staging site. So this is exactly what the user will do. Uh, the interface might be different from what you see in the magic one because we have already customized the team and templates. So this is what I have in the magic. Uh, let me show you the, you can actually, uh, Go to the settings. Uh, all the common stuff that you expect will be here. Lah. Like you can update your own profiles. Uh, you can uh, enable or disable your newsletter subscription in the notifications. Uh, right. We also allow users to uh, download their information that we collect about them. Uh, it can be downloaded in HTML or JSON format. So we hope by doing this, uh, uh, transparency uh, that we can gain some of their trust. Of course, they can always uh, choose to delete their account, but this is a one-way ticket, so they can't restore it back after doing it. Uh, next will be interest. Uh, this uh, another functions that we have in the member control panels, where we ask like, uh, what's your favorite industry? Uh, what's the SDG that you are looking at? Uh, and what's the, your startup stages at? So with this information, we can push the right programs or resources to these users. So by, let me go back to the uh, control panels. Right. So I can see all my activities that happened in the system before. I can sort it by uh, years. Right. I can see like, okay, I've done the mentorship with uh, myself uh, as the uh, recommendations. So by clicking the recommendations, uh, okay, this is loading now. The system will recommend me the, let's see what it's going to recommend me. Okay, uh, so these are the resources uh, that the system think I'll be interested in. Uh, we still improve on this part. Uh, we're using a new 4J uh, engine uh, for this uh, uh, recommendation features. Right. And the main thing is actually that as a user, I can manage my own organizations. Right. So I created a fictions uh, organization here, which is called Pipe Piper. Uh, let's click inside. So uh, as a company owner, I can actually update my own profiles. Right? I can edit the company profiles uh, from time to time. I can uh, assign a team members which have the same access right like me. So as you can see, uh, Alish, uh, Jared, Dinesh, uh, Richard, they are all the team members of this Pipe Piper company. Uh, Guilford, still, Guilford still try to submit their request but I haven't approved yet. And as a staff, they can actually uh, populate their products. These, uh, they can manage the resource they provide to the ecosystem here as well. So in this case, uh, this company do not have any resources, but I can just uh, create one here. Okay, uh, I think we cover pretty much the front end. Uh, if, if the users want to create a company, uh, they can create one as well, or they can join an existing one. They can. Yeah, these are all the standard ones. It's a bit slow. So next I will show you the uh, backend of uh, centrals where the admin have access to. So this is the backend system uh, of the open hub staging. After I log in, uh, I can search for any company I want or any names I, I want. Uh, if I key in Richard, I know that uh, Richard Hendricks uh, 
I can look into his profiles, uh, or I can choose to look at his company, who's Fight Fighter. Uh, I can know the events that he has joined uh, in the past, uh, Rustfest and TechCrunch disrupt in these examples. Uh, let's click the Fight Fighter company first. So the build, uh, three main building block of Central is actually organizations, individual and events. Uh, organization means a company, uh, social enterprise, NGO, corporate, government agency, they all fall under organizations. And individual, you can uh, kind of imagine that's like your contact list. Right? And events, uh, all the events that happens uh, in the ecosystem, uh, not just belongs to magic one, you can insert events that happen by other actors. So let's look at Pipe Piper organizations. I, I can, as an admin, I can update the details they have as well. So uh, it's unlike if you're using a spreadsheet, uh, probably you, you have to share your spreadsheet with the uh, users, the owner. Uh, but in this case, uh, everything is in one place. So the admin actually can uh, update the information for users. Well, user can also uh, DIY updating their own data. And as uh, all the master data is available for categorization as well, like persona, is this an aspiring entrepreneur or is it a assisting startups? Right? And the industry they are in, I can even give a custom tagging to them. Right? So it's for easier searching in the in future. And this is how I add, uh, give access to a different email address. Uh, users uh, don't have to register in Central. Uh, you, they will get an invitation email uh, if you added the term here, and then they can sign up for the account later on. So at the bottom, you see you can see all this uh, uh, interface that's uh, injected by different modules or services. Uh, one of them is uh, individual. I will start with that. Uh, as you can see, Richard, uh, Vinesh, and uh, Rich, they are all the individuals of this uh, company Pipe Piper and down there the system actually suggests uh, probably you want to add in Guilfoy and uh, Jared. So let's say if I want to add in Jared, I just link, click the link. Okay, he's just a core founder, uh, job position is the CEO. Let's create. Okay, done. So now Jared is uh, part of the Pipe Piper's uh, uh, team. You can see it down here. And Guilfoy, uh, this have two individual record that's a uh, system recommended, right? Because uh, it is all matching the same email address. Uh, there's a son of Anton, I think that's his AI trying to automate something and register in this system. So it depends on, you can view the details, right? it depends on you want to grant these uh, uh, individuals uh, uh, permissions to assess the same organization or not, uh, better not, right? So that's, that's the individual parts. Uh, let's go to the individuals uh, admin. So as you can see, we click into Richard. Uh, it's associated with a pipe hyper. There's events that he attended. So this gives you a view that's uh, how Richard uh, evolved in this ecosystem. He started with a uh, TechCrunch Disrupt, right? Hackathon in 2015. Uh, and then he joined the uh, Rust Fest in 2020. Right? So you can imagine if he joined other events happened in the ecosystem, it will all be tracked here, as long as it's matching his uh, email address. So some of you might ask like, uh, if this guy have a uh, multiple email address, I think it's quite common, right? You use email A for this event A, and uh, maybe you use second email for event B and C. Uh, we actually allow you to type multiple email to the uh, same uh, individual profiles. Uh, this, I think, is what we learned in the past as well, uh, because we are dealing with uh, tech savvy hackers. Uh, they like to keep their identity private. Well, as a government, we try to know them as much as possible kind of like uh, fighting, <laughs> there's a conflict there. But uh, yeah, so uh, that's the functions that we have uh, to better track them. Uh, also, not just for tracking sake, we also want to understand them better. Like 
uh, why these guys keep stuck at the early stage programs. Right? Does he need further help uh, from the ecosystem? Uh, what other things we can provide to him? Okay. So let's say if I want to drill in uh, the events, this will be the third uh, components we have. Then I can see all the individuals who join the events and the owners that uh, own the events. It can be a company like TechCrunch is the owner. Mizago is a sponsor for this event, for example. Right. And yeah, I can drill in further to see the uh, participants' details. And all this data is actually fit in by the event bride. Right. So for example, uh, another function uh, that I missed out just now is that uh, Okay, let's look at Erlich. Uh, we know Erlich, uh, he, he's, he run a co-working space, right, in the SF, and he don't just like own a, one startup, so he, he could own multiple startups. Uh, in this, uh, you, when all this linkage is done in the system, you can easily uh, look, uh, look for the relationships and you can further do your data analytics on that. Yeah, so another things that we track about startups is uh, the fundings and the revenue. Uh, this is important because we use that as an indicator uh, of the value creations that we have, uh, that we use to report to our ministry. Uh, this can be done through the fundings, uh, sub-functions. So you can see uh, by, by per race, uh, 500k US dollar from uh, Peter for the seed round and then uh, almost 5 million for the series A from Russ. So you can just click inside and uh, yeah, you can update the data as an admin. You can upload any proof you want and you can even link this site. Uh, so if the fund is come from the government programs, you can link that program which is available from your resources. And for the revenue parts, uh, it actually function almost the same. Uh, you might notice that we have two pipe piper uh, company here. I think this is common as well. Sometimes your admin curate the data and it might insert a different name, but actually means the two uh, two actually means same companies. So you will want to uh, be able to merge this company, right? So our best practices that uh, one one of them that we learned is that we we need to provide the functions for admin to be able to merge the organizations. So as you can see here, uh, the system automatically detects uh, who are the two similar startups that can should be merged into one. Uh, select Pipe Piper and Pipe Piper in. So you can compare side by side and you found out that uh, this Pipe Piper has more information and so we want to merge this into this. So let's switch it around. Double check again. So the pipe piper in have a revenue record that is, uh, is missing in the main one. So after we merge, this record should be fall under here. Let's do it. Okay, cool. It's done without error. Now you start seeing the, the revenue is being uh, moved over to this uh, new company records. Right. So the rest are like status is actually uh, another features for us to know is the startup still in operating or not. The startups uh, they die out very fast. Uh, if we do not track this, then we do not know actually how many st active startups is in the ecosystem as a whole. Uh, yeah. So everything you did in the system is uh, law and uh, yeah. You can set the kind of uh, detail level you want to lock also. Okay, so I think we are pretty much uh, done with it. So I probably I'd like to show you the system part. Okay. So as I said, uh, Central is a module-based system. If you are uh, not new to the open source world, probably you have heard of uh, OpenCard, ZenCard, PrestaShop. Uh, they're all uh, based on the module architectures where external developers in the ecosystem, uh, open source ecosystem, can 
build their own modules and then they can publish it on the marketplace uh, either for free or for paid and the user can actually download and install to their own uh, installations. So all these are the modules uh, that we identify that some of them are uh, default modules that we require. For example, uh, Eventbrite is another module and things like that. So you can actually just uh, download the modules and just drag it here and all the installation will be done. Uh, it's also come with all the upgrades and uh, um, installation functions. Yeah, I think back to the slide. So, <laughs> uh, we just by last year, uh, after uh, the Slash conference, that we decided to open source uh, Magic Centrals. Uh, we spent a few months to uh, change our architectures. Uh, in the past, it's all very customized to Magic use case. Uh, uh, I think I need to set the expectation right here. <laughs> about the open source project. We are still at the very uh, beginning stage. Uh, a lot of uh, functions uh, that's hard code for magic scenario is not uh, removed yet. Uh, we are still working hard on that. And it's, uh, as it's customized for Malaysian use case, probably some of the uh, internalization functions is not very perfect yet. For example, so we do have multilingual support, uh, but probably there will be some issues on the time zone and things like that. And then, uh, since it's built in Malaysia, I was had to uh, warn you that it's not GDPR ready yet. Uh, we hope there'll be some European uh, developers who join our projects and help us improve on that part, especially on the data privacy. As you can see, we are still storing people's uh, emails and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, currently we are collaborating with uh, our friends at the Sarawak, uh, which is this uh, SMA. So they'll be uh, using our this open hub system. Uh, so central, uh, once you open source it, we call it open hub. Uh, they will be using open hub and they will collaborate by install the server at their own servers in Sarawak. Probably I can show you the website right now we have. Uh, if you are interested in Open Hub project, please join us. Uh, this is the URL. Okay. So you can download the source code here. Uh, it's actually link you to our GitHub. Uh, you can, or you can browse our developers' uh, documentations. Uh, it's a link which is a wiki. So all the installation is uh, done, uh, instruction is done in the step-by-step -step, uh, format. Uh, you can also build your custom uh, modules following our step-by-step uh, -step guide. Uh, yeah, you, the project is uh, open source under the BSD3 license. Right? So uh, it's provide the greatest uh, flexibility in case you want to commercialize it or what. But uh, please help us uh, if you think you have improved the system, please contribute back to the source code. Yeah, these are some of the technology we're using. We are not the only one, I would say. Uh, like, it, like I said, there's many alternative and better uh, solutions out there. Uh, Star Commons is a very good uh, source system, I think. Like, uh, Meta Beta, F6S, Kai, Sipso Labs, Ramen Life, they all have a very uh, advanced and very beautiful system, right? So that's actually our uh, inspirations that we try to be. Uh, but uh, I think if you choose uh, uh, Open Hub, the reason probably is because you, you might be a government uh, agency where uh, you need all the data to be in your country. Uh, there can be various reasons, like probably you want the flexibility to customize it uh, as you see fit. Uh, so that's uh, where we kind of uh, Stand up, lah. Yeah. So, anything else? Let's see. Thank you. Yeah, anything you can feel free to contact me at isiang. dot uh, y e e dot s i n g at mymagic dot my. Yeah, I think cool. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Tan.
really, Thanks. really great presentation and, and amazing work that uh, you are doing there in, in Malaysia. Um, so uh, we, we, it's time now for, for some Q&A. Uh, we have got some, some questions also. I have many questions for, for, for you. So that is, okay. that is always very good because we can, we can learn about all these uh, questions as well. Yeah. So, uh, so for example, people are asking about uh, how to get access to this open source software. So I think that you pretty much covered that in the last part. Yeah. So, uh, so basically there is a, a website uh, place or uh, a place on GitHub where people yep. can, can get the documentation, right? Yeah, right. I will just uh, share the link here uh, in the uh, chat area, I think. To all, can I send to all? Yeah, I think. Okay. Right. So maybe related to, to, uh, to the open source uh, project, so I would like to, to ask uh, what type of uh, contributions are you expecting to get from, from those open source contributors or volunteer work? So is there any, anything specific that you are looking for? Yeah, I think uh, all sorts of contributions are welcome. Uh, it's not just uh, the big one like uh, helping improve the security, the core architectures of it, uh, but also the small one like if you found a spelling uh, mistake in the uh, documentation, feel free to uh, help us make the changes. So yeah, all sorts of, uh, of uh, contributions are welcome at this stage. Great. So uh, more questions. So can I buy the software for my own community in Europe? Uh, right now we are not selling it. <laughs> but it's, a, it's an open source, so feel free to grab the source and uh, uh, host it yourself. Right? So yeah. Yes. So, so you can, well, yeah. Yeah, when it, when it comes to, uh, maybe when it comes to uh, UI and, and UX customization, so do you have flexi flexibility to, to make it look and feel under different brand or different local setup? Yeah, these are good questions. But probably I have to share my screen uh, to show you some of the code uh, that's make this possible. So, show you the code. So we that, have uh, a, that, that was a stone? <laughs> yeah, uh, this, is the, this is the source code. Can you see it? Right, okay, cool. Yeah, so we have an overrides uh, mechanism there. Uh, you can actually uh, add in your customization on the layouts, like how we did it for our magic one. Uh, let me show you. So we have folders called override and we actually override the views here. Right. So you can change the layouts and it will look flash like your own site. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, uh, Tan. Uh, so what do you have in the in your roadmap pipeline? So what's, what is your, or what are your key development areas yeah, going this, forward? Uh, yeah, I think this is also another very good question. Uh, for pipeline and a roadmap, uh, I think most of the open source project will have that, but because we are rushing to open source it, uh, so we haven't done our roadmap yet. Uh, I'm looking forward to share with you guys like within the next uh, few weeks time. Right. So in brief, I think we will, our roadmap now is to uh, remove those uh, magic dependency. Uh, right now for the system, if you want to sign up or uh, log in, you still have to go through the Magic Connect, which is our centralized uh, login system. That means uh, your user's data will still be on Magic uh, Connects. So we're hoping to remove these uh, parts, then you can have a standalone, truly standalone uh, system. Yeah. So uh, correct me if I am wrong, but uh, the, the platform right now is only used by all, all um, only by magic uh, users and stakeholders. So there's no, it is not being used with other ecosystem actors uh, within Malaysia, right? We are starting to experiment with uh, uh, Sarawak, which is SMA, uh, 
uh, we just done setting up the uh, version for them. Uh, however, they haven't done all the customization required yet. So they are kind of like our, our experiment, the uh, uh, lab rat, you say. Well, this is, this is a good, very good question. So someone is asking if, what is the relationship between a startup commons and magic? Because oh. <laughs> they, 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 they seem that we are competitors and we are not. So we are operating uh, uh, in different uh, levels. Yeah. So maybe I, you, can, you can bring your, your, your perspective about how yeah, we, uh, we force ourselves to, to work more together. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I will answer first. Uh, probably you can add on later. So I, I think that uh, one part I'm missing about the room map is that uh, we also want to uh, make sure our data can uh, interchange easily with other systems out there. As you can see, there's many alternative systems, right? Uh, and that's why uh, we are uh, on board with our uh, OS for Grow projects that Style Commons is pushing now. So with the project, we're going to build a standard data uh, definitions where all these uh, systems which have their own different data architecture can uh, easily exchange these information, so of course, with the user permissions. So that's, uh, I think that's a collaboration we, we definitely want to do it with uh, Stout Commons. And that actually brings us to the international level, right? Uh, because it's an international global kind of a standard that we like to support. Yes, exactly. So that is basically the, the, the main area that we are looking at uh, mm -hmm. together with, with Magic. So, because we understand that at the end of the day, uh, there is a great interest in collaborating internationally. And, and we are basically in, in the position where we want to make uh, open standard models to, to bring more connectivity between ecosystems. So that is the, the, the key reason why we are also trying to, to work more, more together. So not only helping them to remove the ecosystem fragmentation uh, within the Malaysian ecosystem, but also internationally, how we can help promote, for example, Malaysian startups in other markets, but at the same time, how through digital means we are able to uh, attract resources uh, for, for the Malaysian ecosystem. And actually there was uh, a question here about if, if we are able to, uh, to drive uh, even startup events happening in Malaysia to other ecosystems. So, so uh, in that sense, we, we are also working uh, towards that direction, how we can extract uh, that information from Magic Central and connect with other realities, right? Yeah. Because uh, we see startups, they are not just uh, stay in one country. Uh, probably that's applied to the small and medium enterprise. But startups now, they are pretty much global. So once you build something you want to grow, uh, you don't limit just to one location. So uh, as startups move, we definitely want all this information move as well. Right. We are running out of time, but we, I want to, to go to, to, to other questions because they are, all of them are quite interesting. So for example, can you give uh, like, a, like a, an estimation about how many years it took you to create such open hub and can you give a sort of estimation when it comes to how much uh, did it cost? Sure. Uh, the project actually started with our, my previous VP and now he's no longer in Magic. Uh, his name is Aditya, so I'd like to thank him for or this uh, leading this project in the past. Uh, we started in year 2016, and I think it's kind of reached the kind of a uh, stable stage in just last year. So it took us about three years. Uh, however, we, it's not like we get all the full, uh, fully optimized all the times for this project, because as a government agency, you know our role is not just building the software. Uh, there's many other sites, uh, things that we need to support uh, that sometimes can, can be seen as a distraction if I just want to focus on building this software. Uh, and I also like to thank the team. Uh, our team right now is the size of uh, five to six people. Uh, it's not easy to get the talent to work in a government agency because as you, as you know, uh, the private actually offer much better pay and you really need to have the passion uh, in the ecosystem then then only you'll come to magic to become a programmer. So, uh, we never really spend much money on the outsourcing. Uh, after 2016, uh, we used the money uh, 
for for the hiring uh, like contract staff to help build the system better. So our, our idea is that uh, since we have a mandate to grow the local tech ecosystem, if we can hire some of the tech uh, developers back to Malaysia, uh, and then uh, we, are, we, are, we are kind of like kill two birds in one stone. Yes. So a couple of questions more, and then I think that we can, we can leave it there. So uh, at least uh, from my side, I would like to know uh, what, what open source software would you like to see from others? Well, <laughs> okay, I, I, I definitely like to see uh, there's more similar software or open hub. Right? So I don't think uh, there's a uh, competition uh, because uh, if let's look at the e-commerce uh, space there's so many open source e-commerce system i think each one actually uh, com complement each other so like that uh, actually uh, uh, their function will inspire the other guys to build better one so there's a healthy competition there i think uh, i also like to see more uh, open source uh, framework maybe on in terms of uh, data privacy uh, that uh, can be easily uh, plugged into the open hub, so that will help improve our the way how we deal with uh, data. Yes, and and the last question, uh, maybe you would like to share which are the your your biggest uh, learning in this process. Uh, what were the the main challenges? What to do? What not to do? When opening source uh, this type of project. Right. The the biggest challenge for me is actually dealing with a human. I would say, <laughs> right? Because uh, I'm a programmer, and I think uh, sometimes there's uh, uh, too much uh, distractions. Like, like say, uh, how to stay focused on these projects, uh, and but to make the project successful, you cannot just uh, stay behind and just uh, looking at the computer screen and start coding. We need to be on the ground and learn from the uh, people there. So I actually took the initiative to become the mentor, uh, speak to the mentees. Uh, so I, I, I myself actually carry out around uh, 300 sessions last year of mentorships uh, to understand what's the problem uh, these uh, startup people facing. Right? So I kind of, through, through this, I actually learned from my mentees uh, the kind of uh, obstacle they face, the challenges they have. Uh, that actually give me a better idea of how to make this system perfect. Great. Great. So thanks a lot for, for, for replying all the questions, Tan. It was you, again Oscar. a real pleasure to having you here today with, with us. And hopefully uh, we will do more things together to <laughs> democratize uh, data related to innovation and entrepreneurship for everyone. And thank you everyone for, for attending uh, in the following days. Uh, we will uh, continue uh, scheduling more uh, best practices webinars uh, for related to ecosystem best practices. So let's be in touch. Uh, please reach out to, to Tan uh, or to me for any questions, any clarifications, or any pending doubts that you may have related to the topic today. Um, see you soon. Bye. Thanks, Osa. Bye.